So today we're going to talk about playing Dungeons & Dragons with your kids. I saw so many videos online about playing Dungeons & Dragons with kids. A lot of the people didn't have kids and they weren't really for people interested in playing together with their kids. They were more what to do if a kid sits down to play Dungeons & Dragons with you or with a group. This is for those of you who would like to play with your kids. So we're going to go over seven rules for playing Dungeons & Dragons with your kids. Right there. Rule number one, play because they're interested. So it kind of started off for us as family game night. We played various board games. They really got more into the RPG mindset with a game called Stuffed Fables. Then one day, CL came home from school and she really wanted to try Dungeons and Dragons. And so we did. Little Fox just likes to do anything that his big sissy does and kind of just enjoys rolling dice sometimes. But I was surprised how much he got into the game. I think if you're having fun, they're going to have fun just spending time with you. Rule number two, have fun. That's kind of the whole point of the game anyway. Make sure they're having fun. One thing I like to do is let Little Fox roll dice whenever he wants. If they want to roll dice, it's not hurting anything. Sometimes he wants to roll a dice just because somebody else is. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I don't, with kids, as much use passive perception. I allow them to roll, because any time they get a touch in the game, they get to roll, it's fun for them. Additionally, like I, I like them to explore things that they're having fun. Maybe your entire adventure gets derailed because they're having fun doing something. Let it, let it play out. Rule number three, use this as a teaching experience. One of the things I saw that I kind of thought was bad advice was, if you're playing with kids, just ignore modifiers and things like that. Don't make it too complicated. I completely disagree. I think using the modifiers is a good way to teach them not only the rules, but some basic math skills. I think it does take a little bit of patience, though, and you have to help them look at their character sheets. As long as everybody's willing to take the time to work with the kids and help them learn, this is an awesome opportunity. Dungeons & Dragons will help the math skills, it'll help the social skills, it'll help their creative thinking skills. Really good game from that vantage point. Rule number four, you don't have to follow the rules exactly as they're written in the book. You can make exceptions or give them certain things. An example to this is CL's character is a ranger. She became a ranger because she wanted to be a beastmaster and have an animal companion, but that doesn't happen until level three. We started her off with one at level one. It was a cat named Archie, and it's not hurting anything. The cat isn't involved in combat. He's just kind of there for fun. Likewise, Little Fox was a level one fighter and saw that Sissy had a beast companion and he wanted one as well. So we gave him his fox. Ow. There's no reason you can't change things up a little bit for the sake of fun, especially if it's not game altering or game breaking and doesn't take away from the adventure at all. Give them the flexibility to be creative and have fun. Rule number five, guide, don't lead. This is something that's true with any DM and any adventuring party, uh, but it, it's very important with kids. You have to give them the flexibility to explore things that they want to explore and do things that they want to do. At the same time, when they're not sure what to do, you want to provide a way for them to move the story along. What I like to do is have an NPC, uh, sometimes I play with them, sometimes I don't, kind of be that character. He's not actively making decisions or directing the story. But in the event that somebody needs help, he's there to answer questions and provide some sort of guidance and maybe help move the story along as need be. Rule number six. This is definitely one that's not just for kids that DM should take to heart everywhere. Root for them. In this case, they're your kids, so of course you want to root for them. You want them to be successful in their adventures. Even with players, though, as a DM, you always want the adventuring party to succeed. You don't want to just hand them a victory. You want them to have to work for it, but you don't want to be a sadistic DM ever. Rule number seven, if there is combat, make it cartoony. Again, this is totally up to you. It depends on the age of your kids, but of course, especially with smaller kids, the idea is not to condone violence and there is ways to have fun with combat and make it more cartoony. So we had adventures together where we had different South Pole elves that they were facing, and whenever one of them went to zero hit points, they didn't die, they just turned into a block of ice. Likewise, when one of our characters was reduced to zero, there, there's no death, they just turned into a block of ice, and the party had to take care of them afterwards, maybe with some magical hot cocoa. 
Wanna roll dice here? Wanna roll dice here? Seven. Good job, sir. High five. Do you like playing Dungeons and Dragons, sir? Yeah? How about you? Yeah? Okay.